grade 6 math number 6.4, compare and convert units of capacity. We just did units of length. Capacity measures the amount a container can hold when it's filled. And we can convert between units by using a conversion factor. That's a rate in which the two quantities are equal, but use different units, like 12 inches as a foot. Well, the customary units of capacity are fluid ounces, cups, pints, quarts, gallons. So 8 ounces, 8 fluid ounces is a cup, 2 cups is equal to 1 pint, 2 pints is equal to 1 quart, 4 cups is a quart, and 4 quarts are a gallon. And for the metric units of capacity, we have milliliters, centiliters, deciliters, liters, decaliters, hectoliters, and kiloliters. Now, this is all on base, based on the powers of 10, so we can switch between them. See? 10 milliliters is 1 centiliter. 10 centiliters is 1 deciliter. See? 10 deciliters is a liter. 10 liters is a decaliter. And they're all based on 10. So I could have made the chart a little bit different showing all the 10s, but I've done that before in one of my previous videos. I wanted to show it this way so we could just use it really quick to solve our problems, okay? The word problems that we have. So this was set up a little bit better. All right, each day, a dairy cow in the U.S. produces about 25 quarts of milk. So how many gallons would that be each day per cow? 25 quarts. So we're going to convert 25 quarts to gallons. One gallon is four quarts. So we're going to use one gallon over four quarts as the conversion factor. We're going to multiply 25 by this conversion factor and get our answer. 25 quarts times the conversion factor, one gallon over four quarts, is equal to 25 quarts over one, we turned it into a fraction, times the conversion factor. The quarts cancel each other out. 25 times one is 25, one times four is four, and now we just need to simplify this. Four goes into 25, four times six is 24, with one left over. That makes six and one fourth gallons. So that's six gallons and one quart each day. What would that be in pints? Well, two pints is equal to one quart. And we had 25 quarts, so we can use the conversion factor. Two pints is equal to one quart. Okay, because that's what it is. Two pints equals one quart. And we had our 25 quarts, so we just use this as the conversion factor. Two pints over one quart. We turn this into a fraction by putting it over one. We multiply it by that conversion factor, 25 times 2 is 50, and 1 times 1 is 1. The quarts canceled each other out. We end up with 50 over 1 pints, and simplified, that's 50 pints. Okay? Now, we could have just said there's 2 pints in a quart, there's 25 quarts, 2 times 25 is 50, see? But they wanted you to see how it was all spelled out with the conversion factor. That was the point of doing it this way. This might have been an easy problem. You might come across a very difficult one that it'll help to do this and to cancel out, okay? So they just want to show you how to do it with an easy one. All right. Emma made a vase in her pottery class, and it can hold 1.3 liters of water. What is the capacity in decaliters and milliliters? Well, decaliters, one decaliter is 10 liters, and her vase only holds 1.3 liters. So, wow, what's it going to be in decaliters? Well, one decaliter is equal to 10 liters. So this is our conversion factor. Her vase holds 1.3 liters. We put it over 1 to make a fraction out of it. And we use the 1 decaliter over 10 liters conversion factor. Okay, we do our multiplication. 1.3 times 1 is 1.3. 1, 1 times 10 is 10. Now we have a division problem. We have 1.3 divided by 10. 1.3 divided by 10, I had to add an extra zero you can see here. 10 goes into 13 one time. We put our decimal point straight up. That's 10. We subtract, get a 3. I added a zero. That made 30. 10 goes into 33 times. And our answer is 0.13 decaliters. See? In fact, I don't think this is the correct... Yeah, it should be D-A-L. I'm sorry. I've got the wrong, for you metric people out there, you're going to get mad at me. I had the wrong uh, abbreviation there. I'm, I apologize. Okay, if we were to use a table, 
you can see that when we move to smaller units, we multiply. To go from a liter to a deciliter or a centiliter or a milliliter, we're multiplying by 10 each time we move over. When we're at a smaller, tinier unit and we want to move to bigger units like liters, we divide by 10. So you can see where the deciliter was, it, we divided, see, this is a division problem. When we went from liter to deciliter, we divided by 10 and it became 0.13. If we want to see milliliters, we have to multiply, see? So the 1.3, the decimal point gets moved behind the 3 each time we jump. So now it's behind the 3, now it's behind a 0, and now it's behind two zeros because they had to add zeros as placeholders, see? So it would be 1,300 milliliters. The more we move this way, the more the decimal point would have zeros between it and the one. See? If we went to hectoliters, it would be 0 0.013. And if we went to kiloliters, it would be 0 0.0013. See? Because we'd be getting bigger and bigger. All right. If we had these less than, greater than, and equal to, which is bigger, seven pints or three quarts? Or is it equal? Well, one quart is two pints. So what would seven pints be? Well, six pints would be three quarts. So seven pints is definitely bigger. How about 100 centiliters or two liters? 100 centiliters is equal to one liter. So two liters is definitely bigger. What about five cups or one quart? Here's quarts. Four cups is one quart, so five cups is bigger than a quart, isn't it? So they have conversion charts like this in the back of your textbook. They also have them online. They're very easy to find. You could search for them, and I'm sure you'll find these charts. And you can use them as you're doing your work, okay? Not everybody can memorize them, all right? That's not necessary. But knowing how to read them and use them to convert that is necessary, okay? I hope you, you uh, can do these on your own now, and I'll see you next video. We're going to talk about weight. Bye.